What's up guys, it's Doll Matter here, and today we're going to be reacting to another Grim Dark narrator video. It's actually been a while since we reacted to one of these. We were doing one uh, you know, a couple times a week for a while there, but then I just kept in suggestions and suggestions on top of other stuff to do uh, a bunch of different videos, and yeah, we kind of got distracted, but we're back to Grim Dark, and yeah, this is Warhammer 40k lore, Dark Hunters, Space Marine chapter, so back with our favorite Japanese physicist burner account here. Let's jump into it. Give me a blade in my hand, an enemy to slay, and I shall be content. Grab me a bolter and an army of foes to face, and I will be the truly happy. Hello there, my fellow battle brothers and welcome to your weekly dose of less famous Space Marine chapters. For today's episode, I am gonna be breaking some new ground. By that, I am referring to today's chapter, which is the Dark Hunters, who are also the first successors of the speed-loving White Scars that I've covered so far. I am your usual host, the Grim Dark Narrator, and without further ado, let us see what we can learn about them. This will actually be interesting, because we haven't done too much on the White Scars. I actually still have to do two Italian Spartacus videos. Um, one of them is on Jagatai Khan, which I actually I really want to do soon. But it's like a 50-minute video, and with work and stuff, I just really don't have time, which is kind of unfortunate, but hopefully we'll be able to get to it soon. So, anyway. Shall we? The Dark Hunters is a loyalist Codex Astartes compliant Space Marine chapter, descended from the gene seed of the White Scars during an unknown founding. The Dark Hunters hail from the night world of Phobian, night as in night outside, not Imperial Knights. Ever since a certain campaign where a single Dark Hunters battle company held the entrance of an Imperial Cathedral for five years against an Orc army, the chapter has had a reputation for being particularly hardy and resolute warriors. The Dark Hunters were founded in the 37th millennium, and were raised during the dark days of the Occlusiad War. The chapter was created to combat the heretical tech priests of the Adeptus Mechanicus, known as the Apostles of the Blind King, who made war upon the Imperium. When the chapter was founded, Captain Angnar and his brotherhood, consisting of 98 Astartes, were chosen to become a newly founded successor chapter of the White Scars. Angnar himself was chosen for the singular honor of becoming the new chapter master. In recognition of this new rank, Mordonai Khan presented Angnar with a singular gift at the White Scars Fortress Monastery of Quan Zhao before they departed Chogoris. This gift was a relic power axe, said to have been used by the great Khan himself, Jagatai Khan. Millennia old, it was double-headed, and still crackled with blue flame when Agnar held it aloft. The Dark Hunters took this revered weapon as their chapter's badge, the so-called Axe of Justice. They exchanged their White Scar's livery for the Dark of Hunter Blue, becoming reborn as the Dark Hunters, even as they still bore the honor scars of Chogoris. They, they honestly, they look like Ultramarines. <laughs> it's like the first thing I think when I look at them, they look like just the blue that makes them look like Ultramarines. A single company of Astartes destined to become a new chapter, to seek out a home in the void and continue the work of those millions who had gone into the dark before them. The Dark Hunter's first campaign as a chapter saw a harrowing fighting against the demon engines of the Warpsmith Hilgar, and a mutated Warlord class titan Repellus Maximal during the Battle of Bloodsteel. This campaign has left a deep-rooted mistrust for the machine within the collective psyche of the Dark Hunters. Even today, the chapter's relations with the Tech Priests of Mars are strained at best. They retain a particular disgust for the demon engines of chaos. Which See, that, that's kind of interesting that, like, because they were founded, you know, to fight heretical tech priests, they don't like normal tech priests. Seems kind of weird. Also, you know, they fought demons that used mechanical stuff. It all seems kind of weird when they're like literally one of the they're 
uh, a chapter of Space Marines from a you know legion known for bikes. Which uh. they will hunt like oversized prey and bring them down no matter the cost. Several notable campaigns that they took part in include The Zorona Intervention Inquisitor Gallius took to the battlefield in person and led a force of dark hunters and Cadian shock troopers against the traitors of Zorona. The Inquisitor sacrificed all to close a rift from which the traitors were drawing sorcerous power. Though some mystics claim that he lives yet, trapped beyond the ability of anyone to rescue him. The Battle for Phobian The Dark Hunters defended their homeworld of Phobian against the renegade forces of the Adeptus Mechanicus Princeps, known as the Blind King. Their tactics and methods of war, however, were ineffective when they encountered a battle group of titans. Chapter Master Julunai Khan ordered the Ansar Company to penetrate the hull of the leading Warlord class Titan, and the Ansar Company fought on and succeeded in destroying the Titan from within, granting victory to the Dark Hunters, but at the cost of the lives of the entire company. In this conflict, 403 Battle Brothers died, their names never forgotten, to be revered in the annals of the chapter forever. Man, aren't, aren't they only supposed to be like a thousand people in a chapter? So they, lo they lost almost half of their chapter in that one battle. But chief among those names enrolled are those of Captain Mifryan of Ansar Company and Sergeant Aiken, also of the same company. Their deaths and those of their brothers heralded a new beginning for the chapter and a new method for waging war. And to mark this eclipse, they took a new motto unto themselves. Umbra Sumus, we are shadows. The First Punisher War The infamous Chaos Space Marine Warband, known as the Punishers, led a massive chaos invasion of the Cargod system. The Dark Hunters participated in this campaign for the defense of their homeworld of Phobian, but were woefully outnumbered by the forces of chaos. The Punishers landed a quarter of a million cultists in the first wave upon Phobian, with mighty battleships to provide support. Their numbers severely depleted, the Dark Hunters were forced to pull back and make a final stand at Moore's Angnar, their fortress monastery, cradled in the rugged peaks and glaciers of the Aragast Range, known as the Silver Spears. The Punishers eventually surrounded Moore's Angnar and fought their way within. The Dark Hunters were forced to make their final stand within the chapter's reclusium, their numbers reduced to only 200 Battle Brothers. As the Dark Hunters faced certain annihilation, they were saved by members of fellow Astartes chapters. It took the help of six others, including the Brazen Fists, the Dark Suns, the Doomsayers, the Shadowhawks, and two others, to finally extirpate the Punishers from the system. Though the Dark Hunters emerged victorious, it was a Pyrrhic victory. Their numbers were greatly reduced, and many of their vehicles and transports had been destroyed. But the Dark Hunters would persevere, and go on to rebuild their numbers, though it would take many centuries to replace their Battle Brothers. The Battle of the Black Star In the sable light of the Star Antilles, the Dark Hunters launched a surprise attack at the Renegade Punisher's stronghold, killing over half their number. The Second Punisher War Jonah Kern, captain of the Dark Hunter's third company, led his space marines to the world of Ras Hanem during the Second Punisher War against this stubborn warband known as the Punishers. Kern was able to hold the forces of Chaos at bay while being assisted by the local garrisons of the Imperial Guard and the PDF. The Dark Hunters even went so far as to form an alliance with the Eldar of the Kalor Craftworld helping the Xenos find an ancient artifact in exchange for their help in fighting the Punishers. Despite the deceptions and the cunning of the Eldar, Kern stayed true to his word and gave the artifact to the Eldar Farseer, thus committing an act of heresy. 
The remaining Imperial and Eldar forces were then able to hold the Punishers long enough for the remainder of the Dark Hunters to arrive with Astartes allies from other chapters. When the war on Ras Hanem had concluded in the Emperor's favor, Jonah was taken by his chapter back to their homeworld of Fabian. There he was taken into custody by the Inquisition to answer That's for nice his model. crime. The Delra One of the things I always find really cool is just like the custom models people make. I would I, like I would never get into it. Maybe a digital like that one. Oh, I can't remember the name of the game anymore. But uh, I watched that video a while ago. It was the Bricky video where it was a digital game that is like basically like kind of a Warhammer s game, right? It's all mini models and you paint them and stuff. I could get into something like that, but just like the physical models, I feel like they would just take up too much space. That'd be my biggest thing. And also, apparently, their price is ridiculous, I've heard. I, I haven't actually looked into it, but I've heard people say, like, even some of the, like, smaller units can cost, like, 70 or 80 bucks, which is insane to me. Bond campaign. A single Dark Hunters battle company held the entrance to the Cathedral of the Emperor Ossified on the world of Delrond for five years against the orcs of Wa Nagrat. Chaplain Hyron of the Dark Hunters' 4th Company earned a bloody reputation over the course of this campaign. It was Hyron who rallied his brothers again and again to drive back the seemingly endless tide of orcs. Nights on the moons of Delrond could last months or even years, and towards the end of the campaign, the battered veterans of Hyron's command squad had become known as the Conclave of Midnight survivors of the endless war within the darkness. The conclave slaughtered the orc warboss on the steps of the cathedral of the Emperor Ossified in the final days of the conflict. They were then able to oversee the demise of Wa Nagrat in a storm of blood and fire. The Rust Hunt The Rust Hunt was a campaign fought between the Dark Hunters and the ramshackle Blitz Brigade of the Blood Axis tank boss Badfrag on the world of Nar. Using the world's constant blizzards to their advantage, the Dark Hunters fought a successful hit and run guerrilla war that slowly whittled away the tank boss's forces, though Badfrag did manage to escape in the end. The Lonal Ambush The Lonal Ambush took place in 996 of M41. High Fleet Leviathan invades the world of Lonal only to face resistance from the Dark Hunters. Unknown to their brother chapter, the Raven Guard also deployed on the planet, but used the Dark Hunters as bait to trigger an elaborate trap that slew over a dozen Hive Tyrants. In case you don't know, the Hive Tyrants are very big and powerful creatures of the Tyranids, which serve as battlefield commanders of a kind. Unlike the White Scars and their fellow... It seems weird that they would need battlefield commanders when you have a hive mind. Maybe I'm misunderstanding how they work exactly, but it just kind of seems weird. Successors, the Dark Hunters favor stealth over speed. There is a legend of how the chapter became this way. It tells of certain White Scars companies that fought in joint operations with the Raven Guard Legion. And, on their return, the tactics these White Scars had learned from their brothers had become part of their battle code. In turn, one of these companies, which became tutored in the ways of stealth, would serve as the basis of the nascent Dark Hunters chapter. One of the chapter's most prized relics is called the Shadow Mantle. This is a specially crafted form of Astartes Scout Armor, with an integrated body glove that provides additional protection. The armor has an inbuilt hunter-killer Auspex, which can be used as if it were a weapon sight. The Codex Astartes recommends that Scout Armor is restricted to only a chapter's neophytes and their sergeants in the 10th Company. However, even the most fervent adherents to Robot Gilliman's doctrine grudgingly admit that there is merit to equipping more experienced warriors with lighter armor after seeing the Shadow Mantle in action. Its chameleon-line bonded plating renders the wearer almost invisible. The inbuilt hunter-killer Auspex has claimed the lives of hundreds of Chaos Space Marines by pinpointing vulnerabilities in their weaker, older, warped, or ill-maintained power armor. 
The Dark Hunters don navy blue power armor with a white aquila or imperialis on the chest plate. The white squad specialty symbol is indicated on the right shoulder guard or on the left knee plate. Squad number is designated by a stenciled black Roman numeral centered within the squad specialty symbol. The chapter iconography is painted on the left shoulder guard. The trim of the shoulder guard denotes company designation in accordance with the codex. Their chapter badge is the profile of a white, double-bladed battle axe centered on a field of blue. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Dark Hunters chapter for today. Were you familiar with these guys before, or did you find them interesting? Let me know in the comments below. Yeah, so I, I found that pretty interesting just because I obviously don't... I, I think out of all the Space Marine chapters, Chagatai's is... Pro, well, not, I shouldn't even say probably. It's easily the one I know the least about just because... Uh, we haven't watched the Italian Spartacus video on them yet. Hopefully, I can get to that soon. Uh, and then, other than that, like they don't they don't seem to be talked about that much, which I find kind of interesting because you would assume, like I don't know, the Mongols seem pretty cool to me, so I'd assume they'd be one of the more popular ones. But uh, you know, especially with so many of the other ones being like copy pastes of each other, and they're like the only one that seems to be Mongol influenced, right? There's like twelve legions that are roman influenced or you know uh uh you know germanic influenced in some case but i think they, they, like out of all of them they've got to be the only they're the only one i can think of that doesn't have a european influence maybe i'm wrong there let me know down below but i do find them interesting but anyway let me know what you think below like comment subscribe i'll see you guys in the next one